Could anyone else have Anna? TikTok has been no stranger to controversy since its inception, with concerns ranging from user privacy to the endangerment of minors. Some critics have even called for TikTok to be banned in certain countries, citing security concerns. The platform has also faced backlash over some of the content posted by its users, with concerns over scams, hate speech, and very inappropriate content. Some have even accused the platform of promoting dangerous challenges or trends that can put user safety at risk. This is episode 2 of 10 of TikTok's worst disgusting users. In the first episode, we strictly talked about banned users. This time around, we'll take a look at the worst and most disgusting users that may or may not be banned already. Talk to me. Take it away my whole life. I got a top secret clearance. You trying to f that up? Talk to me. Okay, this one is pretty dark. Ali Abu Laban, or also known as Jin Kid on TikTok, is accused of shooting his wife Anu Abu Laban and her friend Rayburn Cardenas Baron in a luxury high rise apartment in downtown San Diego. Ali thought that his wife was cheating on him. Ali was sitting at almost 1 million followers on TikTok. His account featured comedy skits and impersonations, mostly of the character Tony Montana from Scarface. Ali and his wife had been separated for some time but he was pursuing reconciliation. According to preliminary hearings, there were incidents of domestic violence and indications of Ali himself cheating with other women during their marriage. A husband and wife who live across from them separately testified that about a month prior to the shooting, Anu Abu Laban had knocked on their door and asked them to call the police because she said her husband had hit her. And they testified that she asked to use their phone because she said Ali had taken hers. They also testified that the police had been called to the Abu Laban's unit several times in the months leading up to the shooting. There were even TikTok live streams of him being very aggressive and unhinged, and his wife was supposedly calling the police live on stream. You're not even an American citizen. I brought you to this goddamn country. Name one man that would do that shit for you. Oh great, you were on the phone with police while I said that? Wow. I thought you were done with the phone call. Okay, great. What do you mean walk it off? I'm going to jail, man. I have no record. Though it was agreed that Ali would move out of the apartment, prosecutors allege he secretly made a copy of the apartment key. He allegedly later told investigators that while his wife was away on the morning of October 2021, he used a copy key to enter the apartment, vandalize the unit, then installed an app on his daughter's iPad that allowed him to monitor live audio inside the apartment. While listening to the app later that day, he overheard his wife and a man giggling and talking, then drove to the complex from a Mission Bay hotel where he was staying. Ali told police that upon entering the apartment, he saw a guy and his wife sitting on the couch, and the man had his arm around his wife. Ali said he then shot both victims shortly after entering the unit. Afterwards, he picked up his daughter from school and called his mother to confess to his crimes. In detention, he also gave an interview. I cannot show the entire thing here because of copyright, but he's completely unhinged and a huge control freak. You gotta leave her, you gotta leave her. I know I gotta leave her, but I don't wanna leave her. I want my wife! Could anyone else have Anna? Huh? Could anyone else have Anna? So this is one of the lesser known TikTok users in this list. I'll be referring to Sensitive Society's video here since he made a pretty good video on the topic. I'll obviously link his video down below. Dylan Zippy is a TikToker with around 400,000 followers and is mostly known for uploading very cringe videos, even appearing in numerous cringe compilations. Obviously, that's not why he's in this video. There are allegations against him that he was texting minors inappropriately. He's almost 20 years old himself. At the time of the allegations, he was either already 18 or close to 18 years old. He was texting a girl aged between 13 to 14. He would snap her with stuff like, hopefully it could fit in, or, alright, so can I see your ass? 
I mean, my man was not hesitating at all. On top, he even sent her a pic of his meat. He was denying all of those accusations, but the snaps literally contained images of his room, so he had no other choice besides owning up to it. Thank you guys again for 40k followers. It means a lot to me, but this is not why I'm here. I need to talk to you guys for a bit. This is my apology video. I did not mean to be creepy in any way. I just wanted to be a nice person and to sing for her. And I, I, did, I did not know that she was 14. She didn't tell me her age. And I just don't want to get hate anymore. So. The majority of his fan base doesn't really seem to know of this, nor do they seem to care, and he remains pretty successful ever since. Isabella Guzman lived with her mother Jan Mi Hoy and her stepfather Ryan Hoy. Isabella and her mom would often have arguments. In certain instances, Isabella would spit in her mother's face and threaten her, which made her mother so worried that she even called the police, but to no avail. In August of 2013, she and her mother would end up in the bathroom and she would brutally take her life by stabbing her 79 times. For a bizarre attitude in court, she would later become TikTok famous. Some edgy teens even saying that they want to befriend her. At the time of her arrest, Isabella pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Her doctors found she suffered from schizophrenia and a judge ordered that she remain in a mental health institution until she was no longer a threat to herself or society. After seven years of being hospitalized, she claimed that she was healed and petitioned to be released from the institution. I was not myself when I did that and I have since been restored to full health. The fight with my mom was terrible and um, I was injured in the process. I have the scars on my hands. If I could change it, or if I could take it back, I would. She still insists that her mother is at fault. She shows no signs of remorse after allegedly being healed. She talks about her scars on her hands or whatever, but doesn't waste a single breath, talking about brutally stabbing her own mom close to a hundred times. Ending with the generic, if I could go back in time, I would not do it again. Not really convincing. Also looking back at the court footage, you just get the impression that she couldn't care less. Right now, she still remains in the facility. I've been literally crying about this for like an hour because it's just so like pathetic that like she just comes in and like almost passes. Like she's so close to passing me and everybody's reminding me that she's gonna pass me and I just want to prove this that I am better than her because I am so for it. I am literally the star of TikTok. And TikTok is putting me down and boosting her up. And I'm about to go to TikTok headquarters and strangle their necks. Like, I don't want to be known as, like, oh, like, Zoe Lover is nothing now. Like, I don't want them to call me irrelevant. Like, I don't want to be told that I'm irrelevant. I honestly couldn't have asked for a better introduction to Zoe Laverne. This clip pretty much summarized everything you need to know about her personality. It's completely based on her follower count and her social media clout. She's obsessed with it. It's basically the only thing that matters. But obviously, this is not the reason why she's in this video. Zoe Laverne uploaded a video of her kissing a 13-year-old boy, which I won't show here for obvious reasons. She herself was 19 at the time. Zoe had a history of abusing other guys. She was in a relationship with a different influencer named Cody. She'd accuse Cody of cheating and hitting her, but was unable to back it up. She would also meet up with him and was forcing him to kiss her. They also slept together, but Cody claimed that he was pressured. You guys are gonna say, well you did sleep with her, which is 100% true, and that is 100% my fault, and that was not meant to happen, and when she's throwing herself at me, that's very hard, especially multiple times a day, hundreds of times a day. All my friends saw it. She was trying to kiss me over and over. She was grabbing me. She was trying to hug me 24-7. And there was a bunch of things that were going wrong. And at night, I did sleep with her. It was a very bad mistake on my part, and I do apologize. And second afternoon, I never let her kiss me at all. I told her to strictly stop, and to never happen. But when she kept pushing and pushing and pushing at it, it just happened, and it was not supposed to happen. Like I said, the whole LH was for strictly business, and I guess she had an, a different idea of the LH. After the accusations and her admitting to everything, I mean she couldn't really deny it since there's video evidence of it, she still didn't get banned on TikTok. 
In fact, she's still uploading to her TikTok to this date and is sitting at over 22 million followers. She also never faced any legal repercussions and was never sued. There was one more thing. Zoe was allegedly selling pictures of her newborn baby for $15. Okay, so I am I look like her right now. I'm laying in bed. I'm recovering from a C-section right now, but I did want to post um, a video and explain to you guys about the exclusive pictures that I posted about my baby and, like, to, and had people pay $15 to see them and the reason why I did it because it does look really messed up. She goes on a rant that she needs to pay for medical bills and that's why she does it. I mean, let's be real here, with such a massive following, she's easily sitting at millions of dollars. So is there really a need to sell pictures of your baby for money? And if you really needed the money, why not start a fundraiser? Anyway, with all of these disgusting controversies surrounding her, she definitely deserves a spot in this video. Now we get to the most heinous and most disgusting part of this video. 14-year-old Claire Miller took the life of her 19-year-old sister, Helen Miller. Helen has cerebral palsy, thus spent much of her life in a wheelchair and needed frequent assistance. Claire is a highly deranged and disturbed individual. She told police she would have taken her life earlier if she knew she would get to eat McDonald's sooner. This was during her interrogation, where police provided her fast food as a breakfast. While sitting in her juvenile detention cell, she also admitted she Michael Myers, her sister, referring to the character from the 1978 horror movie Halloween. So there really is no remorse at all. She 100% knew what she was doing. At the day of the crime, her sister will be sleeping. At around 1am, Claire would enter the room with a kitchen knife and stab her multiple times in the neck. If she's tried as an adult, she would face life in prison or the capital punishment. Her mother said, quote, We love both of them. I know Claire didn't mean to do this. We lost Helen, and we don't want to lose Claire too. We don't want her to be punished, not get help and be put away for a long period for something that was out of her control. We can't lose her too. I mean, I'm sorry, but this is pure delusion from the side of the mother. And the judges agreed. She pleaded guilty, and is now serving anywhere between 12 and a half years up to 40 years in prison. Again, under normal circumstances, she would have gotten either life in prison or the capital punishment. As for Claire's TikTok, it looked fairly normal. There was a big emphasis on different anime and also cosplaying. With the given context that she's actually a perpetrator, these TikToks kinda become more eerie. When the news initially came out, she quickly got over 10,000 followers and over a million views on her newest TikTok video, but it quickly got banned. So the following guy is just a dumbass. He made a TikTok account named Ray Reeves. His real name is Rayel Simmons. He impersonated a police officer for online clout, I'm not kidding. In his videos, he wore a uniform, was heavily armed and had a badge, even though he wasn't a police officer. He was gaining more and more followers, which isn't really too surprising whenever someone does something super dumb. Eventually, a woman he was dating just tipped him off to police and he was quickly arrested and sentenced to six years in prison. At his home, officers found eight firearms, including assault rifles and sniper rifles. He also had unregistered silencers, a detonating cord, a blasting cap and thousands of rounds of ammunition. Simmons admitted to possessing body armor with law enforcement emblems, badges and identification documents. Simmons had a prior felony conviction in Colorado, which prevented him from possessing firearms or ammunition under federal law. So not only was he impersonating police, he wasn't even allowed to carry. Thankfully, he didn't try to abuse his position as a fake cop, because obviously it could have turned out horribly, especially considering his huge arsenal of weapons. Okay, this is one of the more well-known cases, so I won't go too much into detail. Sienna was huge on TikTok, amassing almost 14 million followers. She also has a second account, which is also inactive. During her rise to the top, she would spend a good amount of time with members of the Hype House, consisting of mostly people with high follower accounts on social media. She got close to one of the other members in the house, a guy named Jack Wright. This brings us to the most disgusting part in this case. In May 2022, big allegations would come out against Sienna. Jack Wright's friend Mason would make the following tweet about her. Jack and James have been my best friends since kindergarten. 
I struggled with seeing a girl getting praised after telling my best friend to off himself and assaulting him numerous times after he set boundaries and then repeatedly wonder why he doesn't like you back. And she also has a history of verbally abusing people in high school and in LA. Followers shouldn't be an excuse to get away with abusive behavior. You guys all deserve to know the truth about her. Following this, Sienna responded in a now deleted video denying the allegations. I unequivocally deny the allegations that I assaulted Jack Wright. It's currently 2 a.m. and I've been listening to everyone around me tell me what to do all day and what I shouldn't shouldn't say and I basically just want to come on here because I'm not making an apology video. This is more of a statement. I didn't want to bring this online as I said in my statement earlier but this has gotten to a point where my name is being dragged in the mud and I'm going to stand up for myself and tell the truth. I have nothing to apologize for because I did not assault Jack Wright. Jack never confirmed or denied it, which makes the situation even worse because he never denied it knowing that it's not true. The allegations were made in a tweet by Mason of sexual assault. Let me be clear one more time, I did not assault Jack Wright. And I'm Jack, I'm so sorry that I have to do this to you and I have to out you like this and I never ever ever would have done this to you if it didn't get to the low point that it did where my name was literally being slandered left and right and I'm sorry but for the one time I have to protect myself before I protect you. I was trying to be there for the both of us and trying to keep your name and your personal business out of it but you didn't keep my personal business out of it knowing damn well that your friends were going to post those tweets and I'm sorry but you know I did not say you we both know what happened and we both know who it was and we both know that I was not at that gathering that night I'm so disappointed in you and the people around you because they are letting you misplace your trauma onto me and I'm so sorry that this happened to you god damn I mean talk about victim blaming and gaslighting so I'm not sure if I can even show the video here but as a response Jack's friend would upload a video completely proving his point that Sienna indeed assaulted Jack while he was passed out if you really want to, you can find the video by looking for it, but I won't show it here. I really don't want to go through everything, but she made a response video doubling down, basically saying it was consensual and he wasn't passed out, but after getting backlash, she made one of the worst apology videos probably in, you know, ever. ...that I think a lot of people my age can relate to. I hope this can inspire you. I wanna be it's literally just her dancing. I mean, that's her apology. I mean, this was meme to death. I'm sure you have seen some clips. More importantly, finally, the guy this is actually about decided to make his own video on the subject, amassing 22 million views. So the first incident where Sienna crossed boundaries, it was after filming, we went to the room. Um, I was just chilling on my phone on the bed and she got naked, like completely naked, nothing on, and straddled me when I was literally just chilling on the bed. Quickly told her, Sienna, get off, we're just friends, stop. They're trying to make out with me. They're like just doing a bunch of things to me. I was saying, Sienna, stop, get off. I, I, like, I didn't want to like be like aggressive, I didn't want to hurt her, you know? So I, I pulled her off of me, and it took like a couple of tries because I didn't want to be like too rough, and I went out of the room, and that was like the end of it. The next morning, where she was like, I'm so sorry for doing that. That was, I, I don't know what went through my head. I had to clarify again that I didn't like her that way. We were just friends. She said sorry, that was it. After that, these type of things kept happening. She would do something and I would forgive her and she said it wouldn't happen again and we'd go on making fun videos. After all those type of things kept on happening, the Hawaii incident happened where I was passed out unconscious almost like the whole night. She got on top of me, took advantage of me, groped me. I'm, I'm so glad they pulled her off of me and honestly, I'm glad that they have evidence. After Sienna found out about the video, she said sorry. She said if this got out, she would be done. That is horrible and she's working on boundaries and she was seeking therapy. Um, and looking back now, I don't know why I stayed friends with her. She knew I had those boundaries. So when I was at my most like vulnerable state, like when I was arguing, getting, getting heated or when I was asleep or passed out, that's when she would take advantage of me because she knew I was at my most vulnerable state when I'm awake, I hated it. I hated that touch. I hated any intimacy with her because I knew we were just friends. I didn't want that from her. After this, she made yet another reply of her doubling down again and even tried suing him over the video. Strange, since she admits that she wants to take accountability, which she doesn't, and that she didn't see any boundaries, even though according to Jack, there were clear boundaries set since he never wanted to be intimate with her, which she knew, but I mean, yeah. 
She hasn't posted on her socials ever since. Tony Lopez is a popular TikToker with over 23 million followers and is known for his dance videos and collaborations with other creators. However, he has been involved in several controversies, including accusations of sending inappropriate messages to minors and assault. Lopez has denied the allegations, but at the same time, there are clips of him actually owning up to his mistakes. I know it was wrong. And I'm just going to hold myself accountable and responsible for some past immature decisions. As usual, with influencer apologies, it doesn't really make a genuine impression. just want to come on here and, as a young man, take accountability and responsibility for my actions and know that they were wrong. Understand how shitty I feel. Tony basically had no other choice other than owning up to it, since there were several DMs leaked where he was texting a 15 year old. Even with all of this coming out, he is still able to post on TikTok every day, but he got sued. This time around, he actually denied the allegations. Quote, These allegations are not true at all. I never sent explicit images to these women and didn't ask them to send me pictures either. And I certainly wouldn't have sex with someone who told me they were underage. This whole thing seems like a money grab to me. I'm going to fight it to the very end. I won't allow them to continue to slander my name and attack my character. He could maybe make the argument that the clips I showed you were referring to a completely different topic, but then you also have this tweet, which explicitly states that he wants to address the recent allegations at the time and how he regrets what he did. He would hold himself accountable and make sure that he would learn from it. Again, he doesn't explicitly state what the accusations are, so there may be some legal wiggle room, but I honestly have no idea. The last update on this case was from 2021 and ever since, Tony has been posting TikToks and most people seemingly have forgotten about his past controversies. So for this following topic, I have to give credit to Rapzilla. The account got banned and there are no archives left, so I'll be referring to his video in the following. Katie Boogie is a TikTok account that belonged to a mother that was dancing very inappropriately with her own child. I really don't want to show you the video here since it literally could be classified as CP. Strangely, people in the comments were encouraging this behavior and downplaying it. Don't even stress over the haters in the comments. This is clearly just a mom having fun with her son. More TikToks with him, please. And then you have another person saying, Twerking on your son is not something to hate on, is disgusting, but alright. And then she herself replies with, I be doing this with my son all the time. He loves it, lol. There's more. Cause it's weird. Very, very weird behavior. Another person says, You did nothing wrong. He clearly wants it. She also confirms that she has been doing this with her son on numerous occasions and not only for the video. After this video, she did more in the same fashion, and from the videos it becomes clear that her son was conditioned to participate in these clearly suggestive dances, without really understanding what is going on. So looking at her other videos, it becomes apparent that she definitely doesn't raise her children accordingly, since one of her other sons was already taken by CPS and her husband is in jail. I'm not saying that it is easy to raise your children by yourself, but this is really disgusting. Abusing your child for clout is definitely some next level stuff, man. After all, she got banned. And according to herself, her son was also taken by CPS. So in this section, it's not only about one TikToker, but about numerous that were doing the same really depraved scam. Initially, I heard about this scam through Muda, and he even calls it the most evil TikTok scam that he has ever seen, and I definitely understand where he's coming from. In these TikToks, people are begging for money. In the video, we can also see sick children. Supposedly, these men are using their children as props to gain donations. People were quickly donating via in-app purchases to help these children. These live streams were amassing thousands of live viewers, so a lot of money was being made. People that exploit their own children in such a disgusting manner to profit seems to be very evil, but there's one thing to consider. All of these scammers have one thing in common. All of them seem to be from Syria. In the region, families often have no ways of making money. Additionally, the BBC made a thorough investigation into this topic, and it gets even crazier. In the camps in northwest Syria, the BBC found that the trend was being facilitated by so-called TikTok middlemen, who provided families with the phones and equipment to go live. 
The middleman said they worked with agencies affiliated to TikTok in China and the Middle East, who gave the families access to TikTok accounts. The middleman claimed that most of the donated money goes directly to the family and they just take a small cut. But the issue is, there's another party that is profiting the most off of this. It's TikTok itself. They take a nearly 70% cut from all donations, according to the BBC. Just for reference, if you use the super thanks button on my channel to tip me or any other creator, the creator gets 70% from the revenue. YouTube only takes 30%. Other platforms take even less. Patreon only takes anywhere between 5 to 12%. Ko-Fi takes nothing. If they really want to charge 70% and people are okay with it, then go ahead. But people are genuinely thinking that they are donating to someone that really needs the money, but the absolute majority of it goes straight into the pockets of a multi-billion dollar company. If you haven't seen episode 1 of TikTok's most disgusting users, click here to see it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.